Hello Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video here on iStarly TV. Today I wanted to go over the best Pokemon for soloing 6 star raids in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. To quickly begin, 6 star raids are unlocked once you've beaten the game, once you've gotten the credits, the, the Ed Sheeran song, <laughs> and then you have to beat the Academy Ace Tournament one time. After that you have to beat about I heard it's about 10 five-star raids, but you'll know it because Jock will call you and tell you that you've beaten enough raids and this new mysterious black crystal has appeared and that is it, your first six-star raid. And then the, you can tell those by, if you look on your map, they're black with kind of purple edges and they're kind of sparkling. And there is one six-star raid a day but I will also show you in this video how you can do multiple six star raids, unlimited six star raids per day. So you can basically farm rewards. Six star raids are a great way for getting a lot of rare rewards such as Experience Candy L, Experience Candy XL, Ability Patches, Herba Mystica, etc. There's a lot of amazing rewards in six star raids. So let's get right to the point. What I found to be, I would say the five best Pokemon for solo wings six star raids are these ones right here. I'll kind of go through each of them. Now, this is my own personal opinion. It's very possible that you found Pokemon that are better for this. And I'd like to know actually, if you have, if there's a Pokemon I'm missing, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear what other people are doing for six star raids. Of course, my focus in this video also is solo six star raids. So that means doing them by yourself, which honestly, ironically, I found to be easier than doing them with random people online because you can go to the Poke Portal and check on the Terra raids and go like search for ones that people are, are looking for and join them randomly. But I've found that it's actually harder to do it with random people because sometimes they don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> um, of course, if you have friends that you want to raid with, these rules also might be a little bit different as well. But the focus of this video is doing these raids by yourself, which can be easy depending on the Pokemon you have. Of course, you're going to want all of these Pokemon to be at level 100. I think I heard that six star raids Pokemon are effectively around level 90, I heard. So just having all your Pokemon at max level is going to be ideal. You also want your Pokemon to have max EVs. I've made a video guide on the best spots to EV train, the best methods for EV training in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So feel free to check that out. I'll post a link in the description and I, I will also put the, the link to that video at the end of this video. I've also talked about IV training or, or hyper training in this game, which will maximize your Pokemon stats. So basically, ideally you want to do that. And I know that sounds like a lot, but you want to think of it like, you know, if you, if you put a lot of effort into training a few of these Pokemon to do raids, all you really need is maybe two or three to get you through them. Now, the first Pokemon that I think is probably the single best Pokemon for taking on six star raids in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, solo of course, is Goldango actually. Goldango is actually a really strong Pokemon. It has a really high special attack stat, a decent speed stat, and actually decent defenses as well. And it is a steel and ghost type, which is a pretty solid defensive typing. From there, its ability good as gold prevents it from being status moved, meaning it cannot be taunted, it cannot be spored, it cannot be thunder waved, etc, etc. And what I found is that often in these six star raids, the Pokemon will focus on trying to status you, trying to put you to sleep or paralyzing you or stuff like that. So having Goldengo is just great because again, both offensively and defensively, it is just a fantastic Pokemon. Now the move set for Goldengo is gonna be Nasty Plot, Metal Sound, Recover, and the fourth move is kind of up to you. I found Hex to be personally the most reliable. And another reason for that is because a lot of the times when you're doing these solo raids, your AI teammates will actually sometimes status the opponent as well. They'll either burn them or poison, uh, poison them or paralyze them. And if they do that, of course, your hex becomes a uh, 130 base power move, which is really, really strong. So that's like effectively your strongest move at that point. So hex is great. Of course, if your opponents or your teammates, I mean, are statusing the opponent, then hex is amazing. But some other options are going to be make it rain which is a really strong move right off the bat however it'll drop your special attack stat by one stage you also have shadow ball which is more reliable because you can just use it you can just spam it but hex can do more damage on in, in certain conditions of course 
Um, and then another option I think would be flash cannon as well, which is similar to shadow ball just on the other side. So you can also freely change your moves. And that's something that's great in this game is you can kind of just like freely change your moves and then um, switch them in and out depending on what the raid type is. And this move also lets you re or this game also lets you relearn TM moves if you've learned them before. So it's just really easy in that way. Now, basically the strategy for going into raids with Goldango is what I found to be the best is just start by just setting up all your nasty plots. So go for nasty plot three times and then try to go for metal sound three times. Goldengo is bulky enough that it can take hits for a little while. And then if you ever need to, if you ever get a little low on health, you can just recover. Um, I also advise you to, if you have enough PP ups to use them on recover and hex. Um, metal sound already has 40 PP, which is already plenty. And nasty plot has 20, which is also plenty. So. Use your PP ups if you can. And then after you set up those nasty plots, try to go for metal sound three times on the opponent. The annoying thing about metal sound is it's actually 85 accuracy, which means that it will actually miss sometimes. So it's kind of annoying in that case, but basically if you go nasty plot three times, metal sound three times, and if your teammates poison, paralyze, or burn the opponent, then if you go hex, you often either one shot the boss or will take them down very, very low. And at that point, you can kind of just keep spamming Hex for the rest of the battle. So that's usually how they go. And Goldengo can't really take on every single six star rate in the game, because if you have a normal type, obviously that's going to be tough. If a normal type Terra boss, because you can't hit it with ghost type moves. If you have a Pokemon who has fire or ground moves and is really strong, that can also be a threat. So just keep stuff like that in mind. That's why it's good to have a couple of backup Pokemon. But anyways, Goldango is the best Pokemon for these raids. I like going uh, 252 EVs in special attack, 252 EVs in HP. I don't think you really need anything else. You don't really need to worry about speed because Goldango is actually decently fast as well. So I would just say to focus on HP and absolutely on special attack as well with a modest nature. And you can, of course, get a modest mint if you have one to, to perfect your Goldango. So that's Goldango for you. The item is also spell tag, which boosts ghost type moves, makes them even more powerful. You can also run metal coat if you're going with flash cannon or make it rain. So a lot of good options. Again, I think Goldango is just the best Pokemon for these raids. The next Pokemon I like is Chi Yu, which is a legendary Pokemon. Anyone can get these in their games. I will post a link as well to how to get Chi Yu. This Pokemon has been really reliable for me. And of course I like running max special attack. I have max speed, but I actually think you can probably afford to go probably just max HP because Chi Yu is actually really naturally fast. So you actually probably get more in these raids by having max HP so you can take hits better. You also have Nasty Plot, Lava Plume, Psychic, and Dark Pulse for really good coverage and also if you you do raids that are like steel types or psychic types or stuff this will be really easy because you can just blast through them because chi has a really high special attack stat it also has a unique ability called beads of ruin which lowers the opponent's special defense stats by i think about 25 percent now here's the thing it also lowers your allies special defense stat so if you use chi against a physical attacker you'll be perfectly fine no worries but if you use Chi Yu against a special attacker, you're gonna to wanna to keep that in mind that your allies might be taking a little bit more damage from the, the enemy's special attacks. However, I've found Chi Yu to be very good. And sometimes if there's a raid that Goldango cannot take down, Chi Yu has been pretty reliable for me. It's been my one of my, probably my third or fourth most used Pokemon in these raids. The next Pokemon is Azumarill, who I've also found to be very good. Azumarill's gimmick is Belly Drum and Huge Power. Huge Power is great. It doubles Azumarill's attack stat, which means that instead of Azumarill having a 218 attack, as you can see right there, it actually has effectively a 436 attack, which is huge. That's like one of the highest attack stats of almost any Pokemon in the game. From there, if you set up Belly Drum, you maximize your attack stat. And then you basically, you can just punch holes in the enemy. Um, of course, the two moves of choice are gonna be Liquidation, which is a really strong water move that also has the chance of lowering the opponent's defense, which is amazing, or Play Rough, which is a really strong fairy move. Although the big downside with Play Rough is that it has 90 accuracy, which means it may sometimes miss. From there, once you've gone for Belly Drum, you're good to just 
attack them. Um, you can start with a citrus berry, which means when you use belly drum, you'll actually immediately trigger the citrus berry and recover some health. Or you can use shell bell, which is a little riskier, but if you're able to survive a hit from the opponent, then you can, when, once you attack them, you will almost always recover all of your health back because you're gonna be doing so much damage. Shell Bell's recovery is based off of how much damage you do. And if you deal a ton of damage to the opponent, you're gonna be recovering a bunch as well. So Azumarill's great. The big downside to it is that it's a little bit slower, although it is also tankier and defensively it has a pretty strong type. If you'll notice, I accidentally messed up with this. I didn't realize I hadn't maxed out my Azumarill in HP, which is what you wanna do. So I'm gonna have to re-EV this. I'm gonna have to take out the special attack, special defense, speed, and defense EVs and put the rest into HP. But that's what you wanna do with Azumarill is go max HP and max attack with an adamant nature. The next Pokemon is Probably my second most used Pokemon in these raids. The big downside for, for some of you though, is that this is a Violet exclusive. This is Iron Hands, which is kind of like the futuristic Hariyama. This Pokemon has, similar to Azumarill, a massive attack stat and access to Belly Drum. It's also insanely bulky, it has a really, really massive HP stat. So really tanky and hits really, really hard. And basically the game plan is just very similar to Azumarill, which is Belly Drum right away. You can run Citrus Berry, you can run Shell Bell, and then Drain Punch and Thunder Punch are excellent moves. Drain Punch just recovers you incidentally anyway, so you kind of don't need Shell Bell in that case, although if you have Shell Bell, it'll recover you even more. And Thunder Punch is great coverage as well. I also have Wild Charge, but I would recommend switching out Wild Charge with maybe any other move, maybe like Ice Punch or something, because Wild Charge will almost always one hit KO you. <laughs> so I just I just never took off Wild Charge from this moveset, but I don't think you need Wild Charge. Maybe if you wanna get off some last points of damage, it, you can use it, but um, it's gonna be, you're, you're gonna basically knock yourself out if you use Wild Charge on a raid boss because they have so much HP. So I would suggest switching that for something else. But the, again, the game plan is very similar. You go for Belly Drum and then hopefully you survive a hit, which often you will because your HP is so high. And then from there, you just spam either Drain Punch or Thunder Punch, whichever one is super effective against the opponent. If it's neutral, then either one is still fine. If you need more health, you can go Drain Punch. If not, you can just go Thunder Punch. And then I have Terra Electric. This was just random. I, you could choose which Terra type you want for this. Either one is good, and it's gonna depend on which raid bosses you're trying to take down. But a lot of Pokemon that Azumarill cannot knock out, a lot of Terra Pokemon that Azumarill maybe isn't super effective against, Iron Hands can often complement those really well. So these two Pokemon together are great for taking down raids um, and basically switching them back and forth. Again, the, the game plan between the two is very similar. Also, I didn't mention, I have Choice Band on this one right now. If you have a raid boss that's like really kind of frail, like a Pokemon that's like, I don't know, something like, for example, Lycanroc, where you don't really feel like you need to or even want to set up a Belly Drum right away, you can just go Choice Band, and then obviously in, in that case, you wouldn't want to set up Belly Drum. You would just basically spam either Drain Punch or Thunder Punch for the entirety of the battle. And usually that's also a really good option um, for both of these Pokemon as well. And the last Pokemon that I found to be really good is actually Espothera. Now, honestly, there's another Pokemon that I think is a little bit better than Espothera, but I'll go over it in a, in a little bit. And that, that other Pokemon is also Violet exclusive. So I didn't want to have too many version exclusives on this list. But basically the, the goal with this, we have choice specs, we have max HP and max special attack. You should have max HP. I actually, I actually accidentally started EV training in speed with something else. So um, I, I messed up on that. But, but either way, max HP, max special attack is fine with the opportunist ability or its hidden ability speed boost is also really good. Basically with this move, with this Pokemon, all you want to do is just go for Lumina Crash. This, po this move is base 80 power, stab, and it will always harshly lower the target's special defense stat. So basically, you just spam this move, and every time you use it, you're doing more and more and more damage. Something that I forgot to mention about these raid bosses is that if you try to like metal sound them to lower their stats, if you're at the point in the raid where they kind of put up a shield, you actually can't use those moves. So there's a point in the raid where when they're lower on health, they'll basically put up a shield, kind of similar to uh, on in, in Sword and Shield. And basically your your t attacks do a little bit less damage in that case, in the, at that point. When they're in that sh shield form, we'll call it, basically you cannot use status moves on them. So you can't use moves like Metal Sound on them when they're at that point. However, 
moves like Lumina Crash will still hit them and will still have the secondary effect of lowering their special defense. So you basically just spam Lumina Crash with choice specs. You probably want to max it, max its PP with a PP up just to make sure you can hit the maximum number in, in a battle. The rest of the moves are basically up to you. I mean, because we're choice specs, our goal is just to spam Lumina Crash. But from there, basically, you know, Dazzling Gleam Fairy is good coverage. I have Uproar. What I don't think that's particularly amazing, but that's an option. Feather Dance can lower their attack stat, but obviously you would not want to use Feather Dance if you're choice specs. So you can choose your moves how you want, but I would just say Lumina Crash is the way to go. And the rest almost doesn't matter. And if you catch a, a Wild Flittle, you're, you you want your Terra type to be, to be Psychic. I just happened to catch this one in a raid, so it has a Fire Terra type. So those are the five Pokemon that I think are the best for soloing the raids. Now let's talk about a few more. These are Pokemon that are a little bit more situational or also more uh, or version exclusive. Let's start really quickly with this one. This is Perserker, who I think people have agreed is probably the best Pokemon for taking on raids with people. So you might have heard of the strategy where basically all four of you have a Berserker, and with the Steely Spirit, which is its hidden ability, you boost the power of steel type moves of yourself and your allies, which means with four Berserkers on the field, you exponentially boost each other's iron heads. And so some some of your teammates will go for Screech, some of them will set up with, with Hone Claws, and then at that point you just fire off iron heads and just basically one hit KO everything. Again, you need to be coordinating with people. So this is not a good solo Pokemon to solo raids, but if you're playing with a lot of friends and you all have a Berserker, it is probably the best Pokemon. Of course, you'll want it to be level 100 also. Coridon and Miraidon are also really strong. But of course, they are version exclusive and they both are special. They both specialize in different types, right? So obviously, Coridon, I'm going full fighting with this one. Coridon, obviously, oops, um, will be good against Pokemon Terra types that are weak to fighting, obviously. So like Dark, for example, or maybe sometimes Steel as well, or Rock. Whereas, of course, Miraidon will only be good against Pokemon that are weak to electric or, or dragon. But I think these, because their signature moves are fighting and electric respectively, I think you just want to focus on just that one type. So Drain Punch is also amazing for Coridon because you can heal yourself. So that's a great move as well. And then it's, it's exclusive move. Collision Course is really strong and it's a fighting move. And then basically the same is true about about. Miraidon, it's kind of the same deal here. Per Parabolic Charge does a little bit less damage than Drain Punch, but it's still solid, I think. And then of course we have, as you can see, Drain Punch, or I'm sorry, Bulk Up for Coridon to boost your attack and defense. And then Screech, which lowers their defense harshly, so you can just kind of do a lot of damage that way. You can set up some Bulk Ups, then go for some Screeches, and then just start firing off Drain Punches or Collision Courses. And again, the same the same pattern is true for, for Miraidon as well. Set up a Calm Mind, set up some Metal Sounds, and then spam either par Parabolic Charge or Electro Drift. So kind of not too much else to say. Of course, with the EVs, you want to maximize their offensive stat, either attack or special attack respectively. And then I would say to maximize their HP. I have speed here. I, this was like at the very beginning of the game when I was figuring out how to do these raids. I don't really think you need much speed. I think you're fine to go max attack or special attack and then max HP. Now, this is the Pokemon that I said was better than Espothra. This is Iron Moth. Basically, what I did was I looked up the move Acid Spray, which is basically a weaker version of Espothra's Lumina Crash. It's 40 base power, but it will always harshly lower their special defense, which once again, every time you use it, you're gonna be doing more and more and more damage to the boss over and over. So if you have a Pokemon with choice specs, it's gonna be doing a lot of damage. So I looked up the, the Pokemon that learn Acid Spray and Iron Moth is the Pokemon that learns Acid Spray with Stab that has the highest special attack stat. So massive special attack stat. And then you just basically with your choice specs, spam Acid Spray. I've had a lot of success with this set. And basically you just kind of do that over and over and over until they're dead. Um, Poison Terra type is preferred. You also have Fiery Dance, which is kind of like a similar type of thing where it boosts your special attack every time you use it. So every time you're using it, you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. 
Um, both of these are good, and I guess depending on which Pokemon you're taking on in the Terror Raids, that'll determine which of these moves you want to use, I guess. And then since we're Choice Specs, we're going to be locked into one move the entire battle until we die, so basically the last two moves, you can kind of choose whatever you want. I have another Stab Poison move, which is really strong here, and then there's also Discharge, which is just a solid move overall so good stuff here iron moth is really really strong but like i said i didn't want to have too many version exclusives in my top five list so this is a great pokemon if you have violet version or if you've traded with someone and, and of course once again you'll want a modest nature basically for all of these pokemon you will want the nature that boosts their offensive stat the most and then lowers the offensive stat that they do not use you can easily buy mints in this game so it's pretty easy to make these pokemon like perfect for raids Another Pokemon that I've had decent success with is King Gambit. And King Gambit's also a really strong Pokemon. It has a really good offensive and defensive typing, and you can set up Swords Dance and basically spam either Iron Head or Kowtow Cleave. And basically, once again, you'll want max HP and max attack. I don't have max HP yet, but that's what you'll want. Defiant is a solid ability for it, but also I would say that its other ability, Supreme Over Overlord, I, I'm actually not sure if that ability works in raids, so maybe Defiant is just the way you want to go with King Gambit. And basically King Gambit's solid, but I, I use it a lot less than Iron Hands or Coridon. I only use King Gambit when I have a Pokemon, a, a raid that's like maybe a fairy type because I don't have too many steel types here, or, or a Pokemon that's going to be super weak to like steel or dark, for example, although I do also have this um, for dark types, so yeah. Finally, there is Fluttermane, who I think is the best Pokemon for taking down at least the seven star Charizard raids. I've rarely used it outside of the Charizard raids. However, there, there are a couple cases where this is the Pokemon you want, and it's, it's also a really, really strong Pokemon. So this is another great option. And then the last Pokemon in my box, these are Pokemon that I've used in the past. Like basically when I was just newly figuring out how to take down these raids, I tried these Pokemon to, to decent success, honestly not amazing success. I feel like all three of these are doing things that every other Pokemon that I just talked about is doing better. So these top five, I think if you have like these five Pokemon, actually I would say if you have these five Pokemon right here, you're gonna be good to go. Like I feel like you can cover just about any raid with these five Pokemon here. And then from there, you know, your version exclusive legend is going to be great. If you have both, that's great. But if you only have your version exclusive one, these are really strong. And then Espothra is another good option, especially if you do not have Iron Moth. So those are the best Pokemon to take down six star raids in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Basically, with this collection of Pokemon, I have never failed well I, I sure i have failed some raids but i rarely do i often am able to take out take out raid six star raids in one go and even if i do lose usually i can just keep trying and, and eventually i will get them so i have not like continuously failed a raid with these Pokemon, if that makes any sense. Basically, even if I lose the first time, I'm able to get back in there and just try it again and, and beat them. So I, I have had great success with all these Pokemon. Like I said, this is a lot though. This will take you a long time to build all these Pokemon perfectly, but with the ability to get bottle caps, to buy bottle caps, to buy mints, to EV train decently easily in this game. It's not that hard to get these Pokemon to max. And if you only have enough resources to like max out two or even three, I would say to start with Goldango, Chiyu, and then one of these three, whichever one you kind of like from there. So now what I want to do is actually, let's go ahead and, and take on a raid here. So I'm, I found my six star raid of the day. Like I said, each day there will be a new six star raid. Um, and so you can also cheese the system by basically you can defeat the six star raid, get some great rewards. And then what you can do after that is actually just press the home button, go to your system settings, go to system and then date and time and change your day forward by one day. Uh, make sure this is turned off. Synchroni synchronize via internet is turned off. Change your day, move your day forward one and then click okay. And then go back to your game and you will have a new set of raids which means you will have a new six star raid that you can do i didn't click okay so i don't have it yet but but yeah you can do that sometimes it doesn't work on the first go so you just do it again and it will work <laughs> um so keep that in mind but that's that's how you can basically farm raids is just changing your your system clock forward one day and then doing the raid and then changing your clock forward again and then doing the raid and just keep doing that infinitely until you don't want to do it anymore and then you get a ton of rewards. So let's go to this six star raid over here. 
All right, so we're at the raid den and we can see on the map that this is a normal type terror raid, a normal normal type six star raid, and this is a cloth. So basically, once we know the type, the terror type, and once we know what the Pokemon is, we can at that point kind of choose which of our kind of raid killers we're gonna use in this case. Of course, defensively, this cloth is a normal type, but offensively, it is still a rock type. So we can bring a Pokemon that's gonna be super effective against normal, but we do wanna keep in mind the fact that cloth will still have rock type moves. So we wanna be careful in that regard. So that means we're not gonna to wanna to bring Goldango because we can't hit it with Hex. Although I could change that, obviously. Um, I guess I'm just gonna start, I mean, I wanted to choose the Pokemon that's that's best for it, and I, I would prefer to not choose a Pokemon that is version exclusive in this case, but in this case, I think I will. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and swap those items and make sure my my Iron Hands has a Shell Bell, and we're gonna use Iron Hands for this raid, and I can kind of walk you through uh, how we do these raids. I wish it would have been a Pokemon that's weak against Goldango, so we could kind of I could kind of show off Goldango, who I think is the kind of prime Pokemon to use in general, in general. But like I said, I kind of, I think I did a decent job of explaining how to use Goldango in these raids. So hopefully that's clear as well. So let's jump right into it. Now, Cloth, the tricky thing about Cloth is it is, it does have a lot of physical defense. So the fact that I'm choosing a physical attacker is a little bit rough here, but I think this, this should be an easy raid because Cloth is not really that much of a threat. Like it has good defense or yeah, good defense, but its offense is not crazy. Crazy. Now, let's also hope it doesn't have like a ground type move, which is also very possible. I didn't really think about that, to be honest. So let's go. Let's go ahead and see. So my teammate has Intimidate, which is fine. That's that's probably good. Let's go for Belly Drum. It goes for Sandstorm, which is admittedly a little bit annoying, if only because it kind of just, you know, takes deals a little bit of extra damage to us. But I'm not that worried about it. I think I, could, I should be able to take down this raid decently easily. So we went for Belly Drum. We maximized our attack stat, which means we are now at plus six. They actually removed negative effects right away. So had I gone for like a Screech or something, they would have actually removed that immediately. They go for Stone Edge though, which is a good sign for me because it does very little damage. And I hope that means that they don't have a ground type move. But either way, we're gonna go Drain Punch. And as you're gonna see, that's gonna fully recover our health. Now they go for knockoff, which is another good sign because it means that that's another move that they have that hits me for not very effective damage. My teammates do po uh, paralyze it, which is good because that means there's a chance that it might miss its moves. And we're doing a lot of good damage to it. I feel like we're almost at the point though where they're going to go uh, set up the shield. The cloth is gonna set up the shield, which might be a little annoying because it means our moves are gonna be doing less damage. And there you go, right there. It says energy has begun to gather around cloth. So that means if you see that little meter now, that's kind of like, that looks kind of crystallized, I guess you could say. We have to, once we break that, it, then our moves will be doing more damage. But as you can see right now, my moves are not doing very much damage at all, which is a little unfortunate because yeah, that means we're gonna have to keep hitting it more and more. Eventually, it will also remove the stat boosts stat boosts from my side, which means it'll neutralize my plus six attack, um, which is something that is not good. But given that we have only seen Stone Edge and knockoff from it, if it does remove my boosts, I think I can actually just belly drum again. So I think we're fine. Um, now, if you look, it has those two meters. The one on top is its health bar. And then the one on bottom, the orange one, is the time. Usually, you want your the health bar to be lower than the time, obviously. Um, that means that you're on good pace. And if it's if it's a big gap like that, like it is right now, usually that means you're in a really good spot. That means you're doing really well for the raid. If, it, if they're very close though, that's where it can be a little bit scary because when the time runs out, you are you are done. You cannot do the raid in, or you, you lose the raid when the time runs out. Of course, if that happens though, you can just try again right away. So it's not that big of a deal, but it can be annoying if you invest a lot of time in the raid and then you end up losing and then you have to kind of jump back in and start from the beginning. So depending on the Pokemon you're fighting, if it's a bulkier Pokemon like Cloth, it's gonna take a long time to take it down. But if it's a Pokemon like a six star raid with like Lycan Rock or something like that, Pokemon that don't have really high defensive stats, those can actually go to, go really quickly. Um, I know I, I did a Lycan Rock raid the other day and it was really quick. It was one of the quickest raids, quickest six star raids I've ever done because Lycan Rock just has weak defenses. So we're just able to kind of break through it really easily. All right, we're almost at the part where we break its stance. 
And like I said, once we kind of get to that point, then our moves are gonna be doing a lot of damage to it again. So once we get to that point, we should be able to dispatch it pretty easily. They do set up an iron defense though, which is actually not great for us because obviously it means that our attacks are gonna be doing less damage. And they actually do nullify my attack boost. So I'm actually gonna go belly drum again here because my drain punches will do just about nothing if I try to hit it right now because it's at plus two defense. So let's see. Another option, sorry, another option for uh, Iron Hands is, for items I mean, is the, I think it's called Booster Energy item, which will proc its ability Cork Drive, which will boost its attack stat a little bit at the beginning. So that's another way to kind of further get more damage. But, and, and with Iron Hands is actually fine because of the fact that we already have Drain Punch, so we're already gonna be healing a lot. Um, but of course, if you wanna just be safer, then Shell Bell is always a good option. Um, so there we go. We broke the bar, the barrier, whatever it's called. That was actually a critical hit for me. So that's good. That's, that helps us out a lot. So we're going to see what happens here. And yeah, it says it succumbed to the onslaught and broke its stance. Like I said, I believe at this point we are going to be able to basically, if not knock it out, at least deal a lot of damage. And yeah, we do about half of the remaining HP we should be able to take it down in the next turn. So this was actually, despite the fact that Cloth was pretty bulky and didn't take that much damage from our moves, this was actually a decently easy raid because it just wasn't that threatening. It wasn't doing all that much to us. Some, But those are things you need to be wary of in these six star raids is that the Pokemon hit hard usually, the Pokemon can take damage for the most part, and sometimes they will have annoying, tricky moves like that, like like Iron Defense or Spore or Thunder Wave or stuff like that, which will try to disrupt what you are doing. So keep stuff like that in mind. Uh, I'm just gonna catch it in a Luxury Ball as I typically do, and then we'll take a look at what rewards we get for this. All right, we got a bottle cap, which is pretty cool. I think usually the sparkly rewards you get mean that they're kind of like rarer rewards. And then we get four large candies, one XL candy. We also we also get more candies down here as well. Um, we get, I think it looks like seven normal Terra shards. So that's another way to farm Terra shards is by doing these six star raids. We got some decent rewards. I've gotten better in the past, but these are also fine. Um, these are not bad. I mean, it's a six star raid, so you're gonna get some decent rewards anyway. So that is my guide for doing six star raids in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I hope this video helped you out. Please leave a like and subscribe if this video helped you out and if you'd like to see more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content from me. Also, leave me a comment and let me know what Pokemon you like to use for your six star raids. If there's a Pokemon that I that I missed that I didn't mention in this video, let me know because I'm sure there are plenty. And you know, this is not a completely definitive guide. I, I, it's kind of definitive, but like there's a lot that I'm, you know, probably not aware of and stuff that may, may be better than what I'm using. So let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you later.